So one of these recent nights I was perusing Craigslist as I tend to usually do after downing eight tons of cereal whilst listening to four year old podcasts. Nothing of note, I just slapped New York City into the search area whilst probably omitting the Bronx because I was never fond of being stabbed while tie kicking in a Wendy's parking lot. I don't usually look for anything in particular, more so just the shit listed from the lowest price onward to sort of feel out how the market is looking. I should mention that I'm currently brainstorming on a project bike, but uh, more info on that as it comes. The thing is, I came across a listing for a trial but it was posted as 2003 Triumph Speed 4. <laughs> and so I scoffed like Donald Trump amidst any sort of opposition to himself and exclaimed, Are you a fucking idiot? What the fuck is a Speed 4? Wait, what, you, you, you can't count? Okay, okay. Let's count the headers together slowly, all right? One, two, three. Oh. You know, I'm glad I didn't call up the owner and let him know how ignorant I was, and instead I just exclaimed to myself. And while that reaction was a little bit embellished here for the sake of my point, my intrigue after realizing that, yes, they did make a Triumph Speed 4, will not be embellished. Because let me tell you, I was sucked into reading this posting, which, might I say, as a side note, was very thorough. It honestly shows how much this guy actually cares about his bike, because, you know, some people out here have no problem posting the same picture three times and then naming the ad Triumph motorcycle probably spelled wrong somewhere too so as the audio file that i am i watched about five videos trying to get a sense of how a british inline four sounds compared to our japanese examples and then i wondered who else also doesn't know about this bike you know maybe i should burst myself on it and make a quick video so here we are discussing the speed four the triumph that you may not have known about To understand why the Triumph Speed 4 exists, you gotta know about the Triumph TT600, which debuted in the year 2000 as an attempt by Triumph to get a foothold in the 600cc super sport segment of motorcycles that's pretty much dominated by the big four of Japan. The admirable thing about the TT600 is that it was an entirely brand new bike from the ground up, including the engine, sharing no parts with previous twins or even the triples that had been in production since 1994. The TT600 was kitted out with most of the goodies of a sporty 600 class bike from the time, even using a fuel injection system which Triumph really didn't have much experience with at the time. And unfortunately that really actually showed up in performance of the fueling system. You know everybody complained that the throttle response was harsh and choppy and it actually had to be addressed many times. <laughs> for the next few years. TT600 was a little more relaxed than something like uh, first generation R1, which in my opinion was actually the pinnacle of a no compromise sport bike from the turn of the century. Because back then, sport bikes were a little bit soft and you know, not, not as crazy as they are now. But I feel like the R1 was really like, that. that's the modern idea of a sport bike. And you could argue that the TT600 was similar to the YZF600R uh, when it came to ergonomics, but the performance was closer to more race bred 600s like the R6 and the GSXR, but it still lagged behind a little bit. Triumph TT600 made 108 horsepower at the crank through its 16 valve liquid cooled engine housed inside of a standard aluminum twin spar frame kind of emulating what the Japanese had perfected. The actual design of the TT600 however was conceived as far back as 1996 which sort of contributed to its dated on arrival appearance. The TT looked okay but it came out when bikes like these were on showroom floors you know. Then again this thing was in showrooms too, so... Uh. Yeah, so the TT600 ran from the year uh, 2000 to 2003. And it actually ran alongside Triumph's next 600 class bike before ultimately being replaced by it. That bike being the Triumph Daytona 600. An overall improvement to the TT and a callback to a bike of the same name that was produced way back in the 80s. But that one ran an air-cooled uh, twin motor. The 2004 Daytona 600, however, was running the same 600 found in the TT, Albeit with a few updates and upgrades here and there, as well as a much more, more a much, much more modern look for the early 2000s. See, what you got was uh, 11 less pounds, two more horses, and a whole lot more sex appeal. And then Triumph got a little bit antsy and dropped another Daytona. But no, 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 not, not the one that you're thinking of, not the 675. It was actually a 650 between the 675 and the 600. The obvious difference from the 600 being around 50 more boom cubes, which translated to uh, two more horses, along with improvements to the transmission, the ECU, and some different color options for the one model year that it was produced. But the one everyone likes, the one everyone knows and even wants deep down inside, is that scrumptious inline triple packing Daytona 675 brand new for 2006 and running all the way up until 2017. 
Yeah. And we ain't going to talk about it. <laughs> nope. nope. This is a four banger show. Sue me. So let's fall back to 2002 and not get ahead of ourselves. The Triumph Speed Triple line was still running strong after its debut in 94. The TT600 is still being produced by this point, but Triumph is eager to make back some of the money that it put into developing the entirely brand new bike that was the TT600. Speed 4 is literally a TT running around in its underwear to tackle the middleweight naked bike segment. The Speed 4 isn't as speedy as a Speed Triple, but it did have the very well regarded handling, suspension, and the braking of its portier brother. The engine was tweaked for more low-end power as most naked bikes tend to be, and the signature dual headlamps made sure that you knew this was a Triumph. The Speed 4 distinguished itself from the Speed Triple by using clip-ons instead of uh, standard handlebars, and it had those big ridiculous double barrel ram air intakes just sucking in the horizon when you get on the throttle. It didn't have the, you know, beautiful single-sided swing arm of the Speed Triple, but that's expected considering it kept basically the same chassis as a TT600, which also included aluminum cartridge, KYB forks up front, and a fully adjustable rear shock in the back. Changes made for the Speed 4 from the TT included camshafts, fueling, spring rates, and ignition. And in a class with much less serious competition and serious performance, the Speed 4 was much more positively received, as it wasn't at the mercy of competitors whose differences were so minute that any small downside compared to the rest was a massive demerit. The naked bike is a much more free segment, with lap times meaning a lot less than how much a bike puts a smile on your face. The reason why you may not have heard of the Speed 4 is because Triumph only made about 4,600 of them, with just under 1,100 of them even reaching North America. Speed 4 was much cheaper than the TT and ended up outliving it too, being produced up until the 2006 model year, which meant that it lasted until the Street Triple dropped. In fact, you could argue that the Street Triple is the spiritual successor to the Speed 4 because it literally fills the exact same niche. You have a naked bike running the same 600 class engine as the full-on sport bike of the same generation, this time being the 675 Triple from the Daytona, albeit with a different tune and lower and components than the Speed Triple. The Speed 4 is the progenitor in spirit to the Street Triple. The thing is, Triumph has completely dropped out of the inline 4 engines in favor for triples. The Triple Daytona ran alongside the 4 banger Daytonas since 97 but in the leader bike segment, ultimately beating out and replacing the 4s for even the 600 class too. So that's a brief history of the Triumph Speed 4. It was short lived but really its DNA lives on through the Street Triple. Whenever you see a somewhat older looking naked Triumph on the street this riding season, just give it a second look so you can count the head of pipes. <laughs> even though it's a bit of a long shot, and even though they didn't make too many of them, it just might actually be an old Triumph Speed 4. Thanks for watching. <laughs>